What's your name, sweetie? Alex. Alex. Do you like kittens? Yeah. Do you like cats? What do you like better, cats or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. I'm gonna read you about cats though, because I like cats better. So just. You guys all want to come out with? What's your name? Gabriel. Gabriel and Alex. Do you like kittens or puppies better? What? Puppies. All right. This is about kittens. I'm sorry, but it's very sad. I'm gonna read a sad poem. I hope that's okay. Ready? At the animal shelter was a volunteer. She showed me sick kittens in cubes that had holes like dots on dice made for stacking and about to be stacked in a room that would fill up with gas with a big garage door facing out to a dumpster convenient for emptying boxes, meaning they were killing kittens. Boxes and boxes that stack and stack, kittens without end who were there and then gone. Well, I hate to remember, I tell everybody I know, they say I'm dramatic and tend to exaggerate. I tell them they're hurry and get to the shelter before it's too late. Save the kittens. I went for one kitten and left with two cats. The older one's shelf lives are shorter and I picked two ripe ones about to expire. She boxed them in cardboard with holes in a pattern like dominoes, gave me an unhappy smile, walked me to government employees and bid me goodbye. That's it, that's the end. So you have to write poems in school? Yes. You do, do you like it? I like writing poems. You like writing poems? Heather, I'm gonna read you a poem about work and it's called A Bad Feeling. Something almost as bad as loneliness is boredom, especially boredom you can't escape. The walls are beige, the carpet's dark beige, all the metal and fake wood are beige and brown. The prints on the walls are beige and brown and taupe and gray and grayish brownish purple. This after the expensive repainting and recarpeting and general renovation, this was what they came up with. I know my job, but no one cares. It really doesn't even matter if I do it well or not, or if I do it quickly or not, or if I do it cheerfully or distractedly or hatefully or with any feeling whatsoever or not. There's nothing else to do. Nowhere to escape to except into more nothing colors and nothingness. Go drink some coffee if you want, Heather. It'll only keep your eyes open bigger when there's nothing to see. Go joke in the hallway with people who feel the same but can't admit it. You're caught underwater with them all and nobody's going to yell for help. Count the minutes Count the freaking milliseconds until you go home. When you get home, you're too tired to do a gosh darn thing. Your dreams are all colored, all drama, all violence, all sexy, fast, 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 and so very interesting all night long. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Yeah. So I know you had said that you are primarily a writer, but that you also do poetry. I know you've got a book of poetry that will be coming out. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that and a little bit about your process of writing poetry. Uh, my first poetry book is called Falling in Love with Fellow Prisoners, and it's coming out from Arte Publico Press, who was my first publisher. They did my very first um, short prose collection. So that's coming out in October. It's poems that I've been writing maybe since 2002, so the last 10 years of work that I've done. My process for writing poetry, I really like to write poetry on the run, so to speak. Um, I write a lot in my car, I write a lot in parking garages, kind of like people read a little bit while they're at the doctor's office, I'll do that. And then if I feel like writing a poem, I'll write it on my phone or I'll write it on a notebook or an envelope. And so I write them pretty quickly. I write a lot in hotels because I have to travel a lot. I write them pretty quickly and then maybe two weeks later I will type it into my computer and that'll give me a chance to edit once and then when I'm actually going to do something with the poem, maybe months or years later, I will edit it two or three more times. So I write them quickly but then I edit them over long periods of time. Novels take me about a year to write each. Poetry is when I have a feeling. A novel's like I want to explore a theme, like I want to explore what it means to be divorced in our society today and how that can give you cross mobility in socioeconomic realms. I see something like a baby wearing skinny jeans and someone saying, look how sexy you look in those skinny jeans. And that strikes me as odd or 
funny or strange or sad. And so I immediately write down babies wearing skinny jeans and then a poem comes out of me like that. So it's, it's an outlet for quick emotions that I don't have time to write an essay or a novel about. Our love is like a bomb shelter baby. I like lying safe with you here in the dark, but still keep planning in case I'm left alone. Why do I hide the bright jars of pears away, bring out the dusty sardine tins and force us to chew the bones over and over again? Checking myself for signs of mutation, so tired of running from mushroom clouds that my metaphors don't make sense. I'm like, okay, I'm dying. Martha. Hello, it's Alex. We have Martha and Alex, and we're going to read them a poem about love and voicemail. This is like a uh, feedbacking. All right, script. He dialed me by accident, and I eavesdropped. Tiny phone in my hand, tiny time machine bringing me love from last night, listening to nothing for well on 10 minutes. Imagining him late in his car last night, Starry Houston flashed by out the windows. He changed the CD. This one had a slow, quiet intro. I listened. He burped a small burp. Then he spit out the window. The sounds were disgusting, but also endeared as they taught me his normal restraint on these points. That's it. See, painless. Mm. Am I meant to do this again? <laughs> it's a, um... Citizens Net email from the city not too long ago announcing that we had a poet laureate. It was me. That yeah. was the first time I knew about it. When was when I? I don't know. It was maybe within the last two months or so. It just happened. I just got appointed at the end of April. So. Oh, well. I'm glad that you're down here at the farmers market. Thank you. I am too because I'm gonna buy some stuff after this. Sorry guys. I'm trying to pick. We've read. Do either of y'all smoke? No. I planned a home for the smoking people and then we ended up getting kicked out of there oh. all right i'm going to read you this one it's about my husband he's standing over there guarding our stuff so oh, okay that's good traveling i missed your telepathy because i'd missed the tail end of a tv tragedy i called you this morning you'd watched the same story but picked up right where i'd left off you described a character played by jeremy irons you told me the twist that i had missed you completed my thought train and i missed you I'm waiting at the airport for a plane that will carry me home. You'll be waiting at the kiss and fly or the park and buy or whatever cutesy name they call it. Earlier I talked about funerals with strangers. I joked about us joking in our interdependence about our own deaths. I said that we had argued, fought about who would go first. Not you, don't leave me. They laughed at my anecdote. But I'd had to cut it short because my chest hurt. I made it a joke when I knocked on wood made the sign of the cross and touched my hand to my lips. The only serious prayer I only do, I ever do. Whenever we're apart, I miss you. When we're gone for too long, I lose touch of your thought train, get scared of a time if, when, God, the only thing left would be missing you. Good I shouldn't have I don't work for you. She gives you the microphone, answer the question, Ashley. Because okay. the camera's going to record us. They're not going to have time for you to sit there shy. You have yeah. to answer the question. You got to jump the Ashley. opportunity. This could be your opportunity to be like Willow or whatever her name is. You could be famous. This could be like you could be the next Beyonce from Houston. Think about that. So be prepared mentally. I'm definitely going to have to get this video. Huh, it's going to, yeah, it's going to be on publicpoetry.net. So. Okay, publicpoetry.net. Ready? I'm here with Ed and tell me your name, ma'am. Ed and Ashley, and I'm about to read them a poem. And it has this word in it. Is that okay? Yeah. You know what? I'll say heck. Yes, sir. Hush now. You called it unspeakable horror, the things this girl went through. But when this girl grows big and ripe, she'll be the one to tell it. She'll have a whole hell of a tale to tell. And you won't be able to speak when you hear it, but that doesn't make it unspeakable. It's just not spoken by you. It's not your tale to tell. Kind of serious and dark, so I had to do that to y'all while y'all were out swimming and stuff. So, um, do you have a lot of experience with poetry? Yes. Do you write? I actually do. What do you write? 
I've been published a couple of times for different writings, um, journalistic style, and poetic. Awesome. What do you do now? I'm a basketball player. That's awesome. Who do you play for? Uh, China, Mexico, Italy, depends. Which, uh, China is current, so I might be leaving for China or Mexico soon. I wish I had known and brought a basketball and gotten you to sign it instead of this, but you know, that's okay. That's all right. All right. He plays basketball. In the event I ever make it, we have a video together. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, Ashley, what school do you go to? Jenkins. Jenkins. Do you write poetry at Jenkins? Sometimes. Sometimes. What grade are you in? First. First grade? Not anymore. Because you. you just graduated from first? Is that why? That's awesome. I'm Houston's first poet laureate. The mayor picked me to be it. Two year term, so after two years, it's up for anyone. So I don't know, Ed. I don't know. I, I'll be a competition next time. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to be the judge. So you're getting in good right now. So okay. we'll see. Ashley, help your dad out. Two years he has to oh, run. If you're the judge, that means I had an inside track. You have the inside track right now. Because you, wait, because you really did like my poem, right? Yes, I loved it. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Nice <laughs> meeting you guys. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Ashley. How did you first get involved with poetry? The same way most people in America do. We just talked to Ashley and she said she was in first grade and she had been forced to write poems in school. And like everyone in public schools in America, I was forced to write poems in school. And it wasn't until one of my classmates wrote a really good poem and the teachers kind of lost their minds over how good it was that I thought this is actually something that can affect important people in your life. Bye guys. All right. Hi, my name is Mike. Hi. Hey Mike, how are you? Fine, how are you doing? I'm good. I was thinking about reading you a poem since we're working together today. Okay, I appreciate that. I don't want to pass around rumors, but I heard that you like poems about sex. That, did you spread that rumor, Ariana? <laughs> All right, uh, Mike. That'll work, Se sex okay. will work. Just while we're here. Right. Okay. That seats in sex. I, I'm that, I'm gonna have to go home and write, but okay. this is called Words for Nerds. The sexiest men are the sexless men. I want to wake them up. The inward face that holds itself blank is begging to suffer in love. If you're secretly a warlock, don't feel guilty, it's just fine. If you're secretly a monster, then I think you should be mine. I'm red. Look at this way and smile. One. I'm a monster. Two, three. Perfect. All right. Thank cool. you. Thank you for being a good sport. You're welcome. And how long did it take you to write that? What I usually do is write them really fast when I'm like, I have like a feeling and I write it really fast and then it comes out kind of crappy and then I'll go back like two weeks later and rewrite it and then maybe a year later, just as many times as I feel I can keep polishing it until it's done. Okay. So it takes some first, but you know, then I work on them forever, so. It's really strange because I felt like you wrote that one thinking of me. <laughs> you wrote it. I, I so did. Fitting, but you didn't know me when you wrote it. See, I don't want to give away my secret. So okay. if there was a time machine technology that existed that I was using for this, I wouldn't want to tell you that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Y'all are going to look at that one later.